In this video, we're going to talk about how to get started in GeoGebra. So the first thing you need to do is go to GeoGebra.org. That will take you to this page. Um, lots of different options here, but what we're going to want to do is we are going to want to go to App Downloads. Now you'll see that there are different uh, types of apps and the graphing calculator, the 3D calculator, geometry, and um, I think those are the only three separate ones. Those three are actually bundled in the two classic ones. So you can see apps bundle, including free tools for geometry, spreadsheet, probability, and the uh, CAS, which is the computer algebra system. This is the one we're going to want. Okay, so you can either download it or you can uh, just click start. Uh, this is the older version. I personally like this one because it's, it's a simpler interface for me, but uh, you can do one of two things. You can download this app and uh, run it off your computer, which is what I suggest doing. If you press start, that's actually going to run it from your browser, which is also fine. Just keep in mind that if your browser crashes at all, you'll lose the work. Uh, the advantage of having it on your computer is you can save frequently. Now you can do that here as well. Okay, so this is the main interface, and uh, you notice that this keyboard is here to assist, although you don't really need that. To select a you have a few different options here. Number one, these are kind of the drawing elements. So if you click on each of these, you'll be able to see what you can do. And I recommend just playing with them a little bit. But if you want to create a line, uh, you can see down here at the bottom, it says line, select two points or positions. Uh, you could do a line segment. Again, select two points or positions. And you can do things like make perpendicular lines, polygons, circles with center through uh, point or center through uh, radius and uh, different types of shapes a lot of these we well, will not necessarily be using this is an important one because this allows you to input things like sliders buttons text etc now one of the most frustrating things at first in getting started is if you have something selected no matter where you click it's always going to try to insert that object right now I have a slider clicked so to avoid that you want to come back to the move graphics view okay so you want to make sure that's selected now if I click and drag I can actually move uh, this graphical window the uh, options here will allow you to do things like save the file you can download as so if you're gonna download your file so that you have a copy of it which I highly recommend you want to save it as a GGB that's that's a GeoGebra native file now you can also save the file um, and you can you can actually sign in you can save the file and that's just going to download straight to your desktop now when you make changes you're gonna to have to download it again which is why I recommend installing it it's totally free okay so what are the kinds of things you can do in here so first of all uh, just before we get into that I want to mention one of the things and that is the different views you can have so right now we have two views open this is called the algebra view and this is called the graphics view so you can uncheck some of those that'll remove it uh, you can't uncheck algebra because that would remove everything. CAS is where you can actually do uh, mathematical things. Like you can see, you can take derivatives and you can take integrals and all that stuff. But that's not the purpose of this video. Let's just go back to algebra and graphics. And you can have two graphics views up at once. The advantage of that is maybe over here I want to plot one thing and over here I want it to plot a different representation. You can also do 3D graphics view. Uh, you can load a spreadsheet probability calculator um, you can have different things open at the same time multiple panes um, okay so in here what, what can we do well in here I can define a function I can say f of x equals 3x and what that'll do is that will plot the line uh, 3x now I can do things like maybe I want to plot a point so if you start typing you'll notice that uh, the series of things that start off with those three letters will pop up so in this case you can see there that I have something called point. And point is just basically going to plot an ordered pair. Now maybe what I want to do is I actually want to plot a point on f of x. So uh, a point has to be as an ordered pair. You have to actually put the inside parentheses inside of the function because point is the function and then the argument to the function is a ordered pair. So if I want to plot the point, let's say on the curve f of x, I want to plot 3 comma f of 3 I can literally type in 3 comma f of 3 and what that will do is um, I have a syntax error in here and let's see where so 
So actually there's no need for the point command. You can just do three comma f of three and then you can see that it uh, it actually outputs what is stored in f of three and that's the number nine. We can see that if we plug in three for x we get nine. And so that plots a point here. Okay, so these are all objects and these are all editable. For example, if I right click on function and I can uh, actually remove the label. Uh, I don't know where the label was showing up, but if there was a label, I can remove it. I can actually hide the object or you can just press it here. You can also do things like um, settings and you can come over here and there's a few different navigation bars. This is the name of the function that we named, that's F. Uh, you can show a label, but for example, you can change what you want to show about that. Maybe you want to show its value. So now it's showing 3x down here. You can show its name. It's called f. You can say name and value. f of x equals 3x. Caption. Um, caption's not going to show anything until you type something in here. Like you can say my function. And you have to press enter. That's really important. You press enter or you jump into a new box or else it won't save your changes. Okay, so you can see it's called my function, and I can actually move this and I can drag this around. I only have a limited scope for whatever reason. It only allows me to move it certain places, but um, there we go. It kind of stays in the same position. All right, same thing I can do here. I can go over to, um, I can fix the object, which will, uh, let's see, that will not do anything in this case. Uh, well, actually it will. So see right now I can actually grab the function and drag it around. I'm changing the equation in the algebra view. So uh, if I don't want that to happen, I click fix object. What that'll do is that won't let me drag it anymore. You can go over to color. You can change the color. You can you know do different things, different shades. You can generate um, new colors. You can click on uh, you know different types of combinations. Advanced, uh, you're not really going to get much into that, but this will, this location thing here will tell you where it shows up. So for example, if I create, come back over here and I put in the second graphics view, um, in that second graphics view, you don't see the function showing up. And the reason it's not showing up in that second view is it's not set to show up on graphics too. So you can see where it's going to appear. If I uncheck it from here, it's going to remove itself from the algebra view. Uh, so anyway, That'll become important later on, but we'll close that. We'll come back here. We'll hide that graphics two view. We don't need that at the moment. Um, so you can see we kind of have an ugly looking function, and um, maybe we want to change that uh, color. Let's see where my settings window go. There it is. Okay, so maybe I want to actually change that color back to black for now. Okay, there it is. Um, another thing you can do in here is you can actually, um, so you can graph functions, you can actually insert a slider. And the way you insert a slider is before you decide, before you create the element that you want to control uh, with the slider, I recommend inserting one. So you come over here, you click slider, and you click anywhere within your graphics view. Okay, so I can kind of move these screens around. All right, what that will do, oops, make sure it's selected in blue, you click, and then it'll ask you some questions. What do you want to call this slider? So I want to call this, I want to call this delta equals one for whatever reason. And uh, you can specify like whether it's going to be, you want it to be restricted to being an integer, which what that does is just sets the increment to one. You can say whether it's going to be an, uh, a, an angle or a number. There's lots of options, um, all kinds of things you can play around with. But the interval is the important part. So maybe I want to go from zero to 10. Maybe I want this to be increments of 0.1. So what that'll do is every time I move the cursor one unit over, it'll go by increments of 0.1. Click OK. And so there it is. Um, it didn't seem to name it the way I was hoping. And let's see. Let's see what happened. We'll go to basic. I'm going to call this delta. There we go. Now it's relabeled. For whatever reason, it didn't register that. You can see that I'm moving in increments of, of 0.1. So the next thing I want to do is uh, now I want to figure out what do I want to control with this slider. So maybe what I want to do is I want to control the slope of this function. I'm going to change this back to 3x because we, we didn't fix the object and it was moving. So maybe what I want to do is uh, let me control the vertical intercept. So I can type in plus delta now that the slider has been created and this GeoGebra knows automatically that oh delta is the value of a slider and now if I start to move that slider um, I can actually control the uh, the y-intercept of that function. And where that function has gone, I have no idea. 
So it appears that I've unselected it. I went back into right click settings and then on the advanced tab, I was actually showing it in the graphics two view instead of the graphics one view. Okay, so to demonstrate the slider, now you can see that what's happening is it's actually changing the vertical intercept. It's moving that line up or down. Okay, so that's uh, that's one of the things you can do in here. Another useful feature is uh, you can actually type in text in here. So if you do a single quote and you say, this is for me to know what I am doing, you can actually uh, see that register over here. Um, you can change this so that yeah, you can you can actually have this way you can type text on the screen. So hello, that will appear somewhere, and I can actually drag and uh, move that. Um, so there it is, and it becomes a box on the screen. The other way you could insert text onto your graph is by going to ABC text, and you click somewhere, and then you can type in hello to and that will also insert text. Again, you can change all the settings on it, change the size, color, font, whatever you want. Um, if I want to have comments in here though, like for example, I want to say what, I'm, what it is that I'm doing. So what I can do is click on the plus sign and say text and say this is a description of what is below. Okay, that does not appear on the graph. That's restricted simply as a comment to the user so that you want to remind yourself why you defined a symbol, uh, you can do that there. Finally, one uh, last thing I want to point out in this video is that you can actually do some pretty uh, cool stuff. For example, if I want to say I want just the coordinates of this ordered pair. Now this ordered pair is called A, and that's the ordered pair that we had whoops, somewhere uh, at 311.6 right now it's just not showing up uh, because it is maybe being shown in a different graphics view again. This is where uh, GeoGebra can be a little bit frustrating when you're first getting started. Yeah, see it's showing up in graphics 2 not in graphics 1. So that's something to check. And uh, so there's that point. And maybe what I want to do is I want to uh, be able to always have access to the two elements within that ordered pair. So a function within GeoGebra is x parentheses, and what that will do is the second I give it a parameter, that will return the x component of whatever ordered pair I feed it. So I want the x component of a, and you can see that that is the number three, and if I do y of a, that will give me the y component of the ordered pair a. That's a very useful thing to have because let's say I want to plot I don't know why, but let's say I want to plot the ordered pair, but the um, inverse of that ordered pair. So I want 11.6 to be in the x position and 3 to be in the y position. What I can do is type in y of a, comma x of a, and now that's created an ordered pair over here at 11.63. Now check out what happens. As I slide to this, that point b is moving. Well, why is it moving? The reason it's moving is because it's referencing the point a. It's its x component is the y component of a, and its y component is the x component of a. And now the ordered pair 3, 9 is changing. Why? Well, because that is the point 3 comma f of 3, meaning that as, as I change delta, delta is changing the vertical intercept. And if you change the vertical intercept, you're changing the ordered pairs on the function, which is changing a, which is changing b. So you get this really cool trickle effect, and you can kind of see how those points are uh, we would say the reflections along the line y equals x. This point is this point's reflection along the line y equals x. So some pretty, pretty cool stuff we can do here. We'll go ahead and leave it at that for this video. Feel free to play around with things. Uh, just save your file on a regular basis. Uh, but, you know, if you, if you want to put in a circle or test something, get a, a test file going, like I want a circle with a center and a radius, and I can specify the radius to be 4, and I get a perfect circle on, on my graph without having uh, to work for it whatsoever. Uh, now I can also change settings in there, and in those settings I can say, I want a circle that has a radius of delta. Ooh, what's going to happen if I have a radius of delta? Well, look at that. Now suddenly I've got some dynamic stuff happening on here. Oops, I didn't uh, uncheck the... Uh, the go back to the move graphics view and I can do some pretty dynamic